From WBNG, the Southern Tier's number one local news. This is 12 News at 11. Good evening and thank you for joining us for 12 News here at 11. I'm Zach Grady. We begin tonight in northern Pennsylvania. While the Vietnam War Memorial is located in Washington, D.C., though this week it can also be found in Susquehanna Valley. A replica of the wall has been posted in Halstead, Pennsylvania. 12 News is Daniel Curran learned how the residents can view the memorial and honor the fallen soldiers. Now this wall that you see behind me is 80% of the scale of the Vietnam War Memorial located in Washington, D.C. And listed on it are the names of all of the 58,000 plus U.S. soldiers that lost their lives in the Vietnam War. So we fundraised in order to bring this wall here so all Vietnam veterans and people who don't get to go down to, to Washington, D.C. could come and see this wall. The wall travels throughout the country and came to Pennsylvania from Texas. It was brought in by American Legion Post 357 in Halstead. This wall gives local veterans and community members a chance to see a national landmark right in their backyard. It means the world to me. My father is a Vietnam veteran, and unfortunately, most of the Vietnam veterans, when they came home, they weren't welcomed. And this is a way to give our thanks back to our veterans. This event is extra special for Robert Ralston. He is a local veteran who served in Vietnam. Ralston searched the wall and was able to find the names of several individuals he served with. It's kind of breathtaking. Uh, I've been to the memorial in, in uh, Washington a, a couple times, and, uh, and this is just great for the community and, and for, the, for everybody. It's just, it's just overwhelming. The wall is free to visit and is open for 24 hours from now until Sunday afternoon. The community encourages everyone to come see it while it's here. Daniel Curran, 12 News, Susquehanna County. This evening, the Junior League of Binghamton held a press conference at the Kilmer Mansion to announce two major upcoming projects for 2025. Both of the upcoming projects are in collaboration with multiple local organizations, such as Chow and the Kilmer Mansion. The goal, to combat food insecurity and hunger in Broome County. The first, projected announced, the first project announced for next year was their grand fundraiser, which will be a 1900s theme designer show house. Lindsey Griffin with the Junior League spoke at the announcement about what we can expect from the event in the coming year. As you walk through the mansion, you will not only marvel at the stunning transformations, but you'll also learn about the Kilmer family's profound impact on Binghamton and beyond. The second project to come in 2025 is a new food recovery and prepared meal truck. The truck will work to provide nutritious meals for those who need it, recovering from local, recovering from local food businesses and restaurants that would otherwise go to waste. There are plans to hire chefs and drivers to work and distribute the meals to the community. This food truck project is more than just a vehicle for delivering meals. It is a symbol of our commitment to improving the lives of those in the community. It reflects our dedication to addressing food insecurity with compassion, innovation, and collaboration. The Binghamton Junior League and Chow are both excited for the upcoming fundraisers, they say, and collaborative projects in 2025. Senator Leah Webb announced the allocation of $300,000 in state funding to enhance Cass Park in Ithaca. The funding will support essential capital projects including bathroom renovations and improvements to the park's cold storage facilities. Senator Webb's commitment to improving local infrastructure, she says, is evident in her dedication to the enhancing of quality community spaces. These improvements will significantly enhance the park's accessibility and the overall visitor experience. Over half a century, Cass Park has fostered community health and well-being, offering a wide array of sports, recreational activities, and also year-round events that cater to community members of all ages, at the same time, when you have great assets such as this, it's important that as a state and as a community that we invest in them. Some of Cass Park's facilities include 32 athletic fields, two playgrounds, four tennis courts, and a scenic waterfront fitness trail system. New York State is looking to move away from standardized testings as a graduation requirement in the upcoming years. Traditionally, students need to take and pass Regents exams as a requirement to graduate high school within the Empire State. 
New studies show this may be not be an effective method, though. New York State United Teachers started the idea after a survey of his of its members showed that 88% of respondents supported alternative methods to Regents' exams for graduation requirements. This would allow the schools to have students learn in ways that aren't centered around, quote, a one-size-fits-all test. With the change, students would be able to focus on other disciplines that they are interested in and take a wider variety of classes. When you take a look at, I think, one of the the biggest parts of, of what the state has put out is this idea of a portrait of a graduate. And it expands beyond simply passing a regents exam. You know, they're looking for, for proficiencies in other areas that you can't measure through a traditional paper and pen test. Students still will be required to prove their proficiencies in some form for graduation. As well, they must show real life skills applicable to, applicable to the job market or knowledge of a subject that demonstrates mastery. Governor Hochul announced funding on Thursday for local police departments through the GIVE initiative. In Broome County, the Binghamton Police Department will get just over $370,000. The Sheriff's Office will receive just over $260,000 and just over $132,000 is headed to the District Attorney's Office. In Tompkins County, Ithaca Police are getting just over $141,000. The Sheriff's Office will receive just over $195,000 and the probation department is getting over just over forty six thousand dollars once again by committing another thirty six million dollars we're sending a strong message to new yorkers they were making a statement about our priorities that we will not let up we will not take our foot off the gas we'll continue to invest in crime fighting strategies that we know are working the funding comes after a 28% decline in shooting incidents with injury throughout New York State during the first five months of 2024. The Bradford County District Attorney's Office announced Thursday that 26-year-old Sebastian A. Schultz of Ulster, Pennsylvania, was sentenced to prison after making terroristic threats towards an ex-girlfriend in January. Schultz was convicted for possessing a firearm with an altered manufacturer serial number, a felony, and was also convicted of making terroristic threats, which is a misdemeanor. The district, office, the district attorney's office said Schultz will serve 18 months to a maximum of 60 months in prison. He will also undergo an additional 24 months of state supervision following the completion of that sentence. Former President Donald Trump visited the U.S. Capitol today for the first time since the insurrection that led to his second impeachment a week before leaving the White House. Former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said in a statement that Trump was returning to the scene of the crime, quote unquote. Robert Costa has the details of the fiery exchange. Rousing displays of Republican unity today around the party's presumptive nominee. I'm with them a thousand percent. There was me a thousand percent. And a notable show of a truce between Trump and his longtime foil, Senate GOP leader Mitch McConnell, after not speaking since late 2020. For former President Trump, Thursday's Washington tour was a chance to play up his poll numbers and reassure his party after becoming a convicted felon last month. This was a uh, great meeting. There's tremendous unity in the Republican Party. In a closed-door meeting with House Republicans, sources say he lashed out at the Justice Department, calling it dirty along with an expletive. He also criticized Milwaukee, host to the Republican National Convention next month, calling it horrible. A spokesman said he was referring to crime and voting issues. Wisconsin Democrat Gwen Moore shot back, saying once he's settled in with his parole officer, I am certain he will discover that Milwaukee is a wonderful city. This was Trump's first trip to the Hill since the January 6 attack in 2021, and Republicans today avoided the topic. Did January 6 ever come up? No, it did not. On January 6, Donald Trump lit a fire in this country. Meanwhile, the Biden campaign highlighted Trump's return, releasing this ad this morning, as a mobile billboard was seen playing video of the January 6 attack across Capitol Hill. Trump has said he would pardon rioters. They ought to release 
the J6 hostages. They've suffered enough. As I stood outside the Senate GOP conference room, I heard cheer after cheer, laugh after laugh. This wasn't a reckoning, but a Republican embrace of Trump, despite all of his challenges. Robert Costa, CBS News, Washington. Coming up still here at 12 News at 11, the nation's highest court has issued a milestone ruling on a controversial abortion drug. We have all the details when we return. But before we go anywhere, here's a live look at downtown Binghamton. Chief Meteorologist Howard Manges has the latest forecast right here after the break. Everyone deserves the fastest, most reliable internet speeds, regardless of where they live. That's why Spectrum offers the fastest speeds in more neighborhoods than any other provider. So switch to Spectrum and get a powerful network that connects nearly 500 million devices. Get Spectrum Internet starting at $29.99 a month with 99.9% .9 network reliability and get free advanced Wi-Fi, free modem, and one free line of unlimited mobile. Plus save with our two-year price guarantee. Call 1-855-574-4687 or scan to call. With Spectrum Internet, you can power all of your devices to enjoy streaming, video chatting, and gaming with the most reliable internet speeds. Get a powerful network that millions of customers rely on. I rely on Spectrum Internet. You should too. Switch to Spectrum Internet starting at $29.99 a month with free advanced Wi-Fi, free modem, and one free line of unlimited mobile. Plus, save with our two-year price guarantee. Call 1-855-574-4687. Call now. Where there is pain, find comfort. Where there is despair, find hope. Where there is fear, find peace. During a serious illness, the team from Helios Care delivers an entire range of expert support wherever you call home, including valuable education and training for family caregivers. Because even with a serious illness, the better you feel, the brighter your days. How can Helios Care help your family? Call or visit our website to learn more. If this is something you want to do, you really have to give 100% to it. It just requires a compassion and a willingness to learn. It's constant work, but it really brings the station together. Because you're always learning, you're always taking tests. Learning new things and amplifying and applying, being able to put it out when I'm on scene or something. The requirements have become more stringent, and that's a good thing. It's leveled up with what you would do if you were on a paid fire department. When it comes to learning new skills, everybody's helping each other obtain those new skills. Not everybody has to do all of it. Some fire districts allow you to do just one piece of it. I'm a tender operator, and I'm able to do what I can do without undue stress. There's always going to be 911. There's always going to be an emergency. You have to have that type of personality where you really do enjoy helping people. If I'm not willing to be that person, then how can I expect somebody else to be that person? The great race is coming back to the southern tier. A cross-country endurance rally from Kentucky to Maine, all in the name of classic cars. Come join us for food, fun, live music, and of course, all of the vintage vehicles. And make sure to tune in to WBNG as we travel from Lewisburg right here to downtown. All of the fun, all of the craziness, all of the highlights on WBNG. Today's definitive ruling by the nation's highest court, striking down the, a challenge to the abortion pill, mefeprestone, preserves access to the widely used medication nationwide. The nine justices all agreed that the group of anti-abortion rights doctors and others who brought the lawsuit against the FDA lacked the legal standing to do so. The decision comes on the same day that Senate Republicans blocked legislation that would protect access for in vitro fertilization and other fertility treatments. Jan Crawford has, is outside the Supreme Court with the details. Finding common ground in a divisive case, the Supreme Court refused to roll back access to the abortion pill Mifepristone, saying a group of anti-abortion doctors had no business filing a lawsuit over how the pill was approved. We knew we had no choice but to sue the FDA. The decision, written by Justice Brett Kavanaugh, unanimously reversed conservative lower court judges who okayed the group's lawsuit against the FDA, seeking to restrict access to the drug nationwide. 
The stakes were high. 63% of abortions last year were medication abortions, and the lower court ruling would have required women to see a health care provider instead of telehealth to get the pill. The justices said the lawsuit was flawed from the beginning because the anti-abortion doctors weren't harmed by the FDA's approval of Mifepristone, and so they lacked legal standing to sue. Instead of going to the courts, Kavanaugh wrote, citizens and doctors who object to what the law allows others to do may always take their concerns to the executive and legislative branches. While not a decision on the merits, it sends a message to lower courts to put some brakes on novel legal efforts both sides have used in the fight over abortion. It isn't the end. There are three states that will continue to litigate this issue in the lower courts. Those states are Idaho, Missouri, and Kansas. Additional states ban mifepristone prescriptions by telehealth. And Louisiana has listed it as a controlled dangerous substance. This is not a cause for celebration because the reality is certain things are still not going to change. Jan Crawford, CBS News, Washington. We head over to the Weather Center now for a check on our forecast. Chief Meteorologist Howard joins us with a look. Howard, can we expect to fall asleep with the windows open tonight? Yeah, tonight's a comfortable night, um, but uh, temperatures are going to be climbing substantially uh, as we get into next week. There's a look at the radar and satellite, and we're seeing a uh, cold front come into uh, southern Ontario, stretching back into the uh, Midwest as well. Look at all the lightning uh, coming into uh, northern portions of New York over Lake Ontario as well as Ontario. Actually, one severe thunderstorm warning now issued up toward um, uh, the uh, Adirondacks there. And, um, yeah, we, we could get a couple of showers here for uh, the overnight hours. But there's a look. I mean, just this this line has been producing all kinds of lightning as it's moving across um, the uh, St. Lawrence River right now and over through uh, probably quite the light show <laughs> on the eastern shores of Lake Ontario as well as even on the southern shores there looking north toward Canada. Um, again. Maybe a little bit of a boundary coming in there with some showers developing into western New York, just around uh, also east of uh, Syracuse or Rochester, excuse me. So we could see a few of those showers come in overnight. I'm not expecting anything severe here tonight. 60s and 70s at this hour. Uh, looking ahead to what we're watching, yeah, an isolated severe storm is possible tomorrow. Uh, any storms that are strong enough could produce damaging wind, maybe some hail. Timing from about 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. I gotta say, I'm looking at some of the latest data here. Uh, what we refer to as the uh, convection allowing models, which is um, it essentially allows for thunderstorms to form, and they're not crazy at all about producing thunderstorms, uh, widespread thunderstorms tomorrow in New York, Pennsylvania. Different story. Um, but in our area. So we'll have to see whether or not that trend continues toward the morning. Um, as I've been stressing all along, severe weather not guaranteed tomorrow. Uh, be sure to follow the forecast with Brian in the morning. He'll have updates to that. But um, uh, far and away, the, I think the bigger threat is going to be the dangerous heat and humidity coming next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, maybe even Friday. We could be looking at air temperatures greater than 90 degrees with humidity also cranked up. So uh, feels like temperatures could be approaching, you know, 100 degrees at times in the sun. It's going to be very, very, it's going to be brutally hot. Let's put it that way and uncomfortable if you don't have air conditioning. Yeah, that severe outlook, uh, marginal one out of five. But there's a look at this monster ridge of high pressure that's going to build in through mid next week. Hazy, hot, and humid. Uh, we're going right into midsummer. As far as what we're looking at here tonight, a couple of showers, perhaps a rumble. Tomorrow morning, clouds and some sunshine, maybe a shower around. But look what happens by 1 o'clock. This is uh, uh, looking at some clouds and some sunshine, perhaps a shower or a thunderstorm. But 2, 3, 4 o'clock, notice how all the activity is well south of Binghamton into northeastern Pennsylvania. Um, if that trend continues, yeah, we're going to see a lot of dry time tomorrow. So by 5 or 6 o'clock tomorrow evening, based on some latest guidance, um, we're looking at a lot of dry time. And then into Saturday morning and Saturday afternoon, it is going to be absolutely beautiful for Father's Day weekend. There it is, 73 tomorrow. That chance of rain or isolated severe storm, around 60%. So I dropped it from 70. But again, be sure to watch the forecast tomorrow if you have plans uh, in the afternoon. Connor will take care of you. I'm off tomorrow. Connor will take care of you. Brian will take care of you in the morning. But then look at the heat there, Zach, as we head into uh, late mid next week with... Um, with the Dicks open in town, it's going to be, uh, you got to pay attention to the heat.
So if you're not going to be at Enjoy, which mm -hmm. everyone should be at Enjoy, or tuning into WBNG, yeah, obviously, what, doing, what yeah. are some ways to kind of keep safe during the heat? Find air conditioning, go to a library, go to a movie, go to a mall, um, you know, uh, drink lots of water. If you can stay hydrated, you can beat the heat, but you have to stay hydrated. You get dehydrated and all kinds of health problems can happen. I'm stepping over into the medical there, but yeah, you definitely uh, try to find some air conditioning and, um, uh, you know, again, getting um, lots of water will be, will be helpful. Uh, looking, thank you. I appreciate yeah. it so much. Here, still at 11, the Ponies' push for the playoffs continues with just a handful of games at home left before the end of the first half. We head to the sports desk for all of the highlights after the break. At Matthews Subaru, we believe that dog-tested, dog-approved should start with our employees. That's why we don't just sell Subarus, we drive them ourselves, and we look for any chance to bring our best friends along for the ride. Every Subaru is an IIHS top safety pick and comes with free Matthews Rewards Plus, and we have a great selection available right now at Matthews Subaru. Motorcycle riding season is in full swing, and there are more motorcycles on the road than ever before. Crashes involving motorcycles are often the result of a motorist failing to yield the right-of-way or caused by a motorist who is distracted. And motorcycle riders are vulnerable and more exposed. So for them, crashes can result in serious injury or even death. Drivers and riders, we're all in this together. Please, be smart and pay attention to your driving. Share the road and watch for motorcycles. You've worked hard, long days, year after year, decade after decade. You've seen a lot of things, enjoyed the good times, and weathered the tough times. You've earned a life that you can call your own, alongside the people you love the most. Retirement worries shouldn't get in the way. But many Americans like you are finding that retiring on a fixed income is harder than they expected. Fortunately, there are thousands of benefits programs that can help. Visit BenefitsCheckup.org to see if you're among the millions of people eligible for thousands of dollars in benefits to help you age well. So you can focus on what's really important. Benefits Checkup. You've earned this. Imagine a place where animals and children can both reach their full potential. Together, at Cali's Clubhouse, we repurpose and rehabilitate older horses to be a guiding light and therapeutic nourishment for people experiencing health, social, and life changes. With professionally trained and certified instructors, we utilize real horsepower to facilitate positive learning outcomes with a variety of programs, such as therapeutic riding, where individuals with disabilities can experience movement on a horse. I talk with horses writing program where low and nonverbal children practice their communication skills. I read with horses where young readers can receive new books and expand their literacy. The Seven Keys to Success, a program where youth can design a civic engagement project to share with their community, learning key leadership skills along the way. These programs, along with the dedication of our staff and horses, prove to be a wonderful source for enrichment and education for people of all ages. Learn more at Callie'sClubhouse.org. This is the Jeff Kai's Auto Sports Desk. Welcome back, and thank you for joining us here at the Sports Desk. Hey, 12 Sports, when we say we are everywhere, we mean it, right? Rumble Ponies back on the diamond Thursday night, and three games back of first place Portland for a playoff spot. Binghamton with its opening day ace on the mound. Yolander Suarez looking for his fourth win of the year and the team's 30th win in 2024. Suarez starting off hot on the mound. He punched out back-to-back -back Patriot batters here in the second inning with the swing and a miss. But Somerset's left fielder Grant Richardson cools off Suarez with this moon shot solo home run. That makes it one nothing Somerset. Ponies leadoff batter Alex Ramirez answers back though. He gets the bats going for Binghamton. A two-bagger that bounces off the right field wall. Ramirez in at second. And the very next batter, second baseman Rowdy Jordan. He goes yard. Left field 
over the wall. That gives the Ponies a 2-1 to lead, but Suarez finding himself in some trouble again in the fourth inning. Bases loaded. Patriots catcher J.C. Esquera. He hits a ball into the alley. That clears the bags and gives Somerset back the lead at 5-2. to two. And then right fielder Elijah Durham hits a home run in the same inning. That fuels Somerset as they get the win 12-5 over the Ponies. Binghamton tries to bounce back Friday night at home. With the loss, the Ponies drop to fourth place as the Patriots jump over them for third. Somerset currently owning the, owning the tiebreaker against the Ponies. Friday's night game crucial for the playoff push for Binghamton. Ponies Major League Club, a winner on Thursday. Mets walk it off with a two-run home run for J.D. Martinez, his first walk-off home run in his career. Edwin Diaz making his return to City Field as well. He gets the win, pitching the top of the ninth. Sugar with one strikeout in his return. Yankees on the road and looking for the four-game sweep of KC. Yanks down a pair in the eighth inning when Anthony Rizzo cuts the lead in half. Sweeper, no sweeping there for Swiber. The Rizzo home run, his eighth of the year. Still in the eighth now. Runners on the corner. Anthony Volpe with the fielder's choice. Jemai Jones comes in to tie it up in the next batter. Juan Soto, he sends a single into right. Trent Grisham comes around for the go-ahead run. Shuffle. Soto can't shuffle into second, though. Yanks up 3-2 to two as he's out, and when they head to the ninth, Clay Holmes in for the save. Runners on the corner for two out for the Royals. Mikael Garcia with a scorcher down the left field line. Kyle Isbay in to tie it up, and then MJ Melendez comes around to walk it off for the Royals. They win 4-3. to three. Yanks head to B-Town, Beantown for a three-game set with Boston starting Friday. Pinehurst, number two, the home of the 124th U.S. Open. World number one, Scotty Scheffler, the favorite heading in to the third major of the year. Tiger Woods also on the course, looking to break par at a major for the first time in a dozen tries. Roy McIlroy tied for your first round leader. He finished at five under, carding a 65, including a 20-foot birdie putt on 18 to finish up. Rory tied with Patrick Cantlay. Six birdies on Cantlay's scorecard. Bryson DeChambeau in contention after day one. He's tied for fourth, shooting three under at 67. Tiger Woods started his day with a birdie, but he finished plus four. Woods, last round in a major under par, not since 2022, and the PGA Championship at Southern Hills. The rest of your leaderboard here, Tony Finau tied with two others for six. Seven golfers tied at one under to round out the top ten. Make sure you tune in to 12 Sports and WBNG's coverage of the 2024 Dicks Open. Make sure to head over now to the WBNG head homepage for all the details. Plus, Thursday, June 20th, we will be live all afternoon at the event from the Enjoy Golf Course in Endicott. And finally, former Syracuse coach Mike Hopkins will now be sitting on the bench for the NBA's Phoenix Suns. Hopkins spent 22 years as Jim Beheim's staff at Syracuse. Recently, he took over at the University of Washington for seven seasons, leading the Huskies to a 118 and 106 overall record, including an NCAA tournament bid in 2019. That is it for us for right now, but don't go anywhere. We will be right back after the break. This month at Matthews Mitsubishi, get lower financing rates on select 2024 Mitsubishi Outlanders, just 3.99% with $1,000 customer cash. Or choose a new 24 Eclipse Cross and get 4.99% financing with 500 in customer cash at Matthews Mitsubishi on the Parkway or MatthewsMitsubishi.com. Staff Planet Binghamton is celebrating their new location in Johnson City by giving away 20 free vanities. The first 20 people who mention this ad will get a free vanity and fixtures when they move ahead with a bathroom project. With Bath Planet, you will always get a free quote that is good for an entire year, hundreds of color and pattern combinations, and a lifetime warranty to assure you never have to do your bathroom again. Bath Planet Binghamton, right across the street from Home Depot in Johnson City. 80 HD diagnoses in the United States for school kids has increased by 43% in less than 10 years. This is the first time a teacher ever mentioned ADHD. I was super offended. A big part of me thought it was a bogus diagnosis. The flip side of distractibility is curiosity. 
What's that? What's that? What's that? If you didn't care, you wouldn't get distracted. I'm a risk taker. I'm creative. Zara's a brilliant writer. He has a lot of skills, like to ask questions, to be argumentative, to push boundaries. Around ADHD, there's tremendous ignorance. Most people are not aware of the positives that go with it. Can't sit still, disorganized, can't focus, lazy, stupid. You can't make it. You have a lesson, you don't clean your room. It's a super skill set. The cornerstone of Investigate TV is investigative journalism. We want to get answers. We want to teach you something. We always try to give viewers a takeaway, something they can learn from a story. What is the solution here? Every story we air, we strive to be able to show that. There are things that affect our homes, that affect our families, that affect our health, that we are learning every day from these stories. Do you think people are dying? Should this be better regulated? Should I be concerned? Do you recall when you became aware of that law? The beauty of this show is that we have a team of reporters all across the country. From very diverse backgrounds. The public has a right to know. How big of a problem is that? Should they be revoking these certifications? I think viewers are looking for something different, something fresh, something that feels helpful to them. And it allows us to tell the best of the best stories and show them to you every day. Finally at 11, an Alaska woman who just turned 110 is sharing her secret to living a long life. Friends and family and loved ones celebrated Louise Thompson's big day in Fairbanks, where she now lives. She reminisced about her life that started back when she was born in 1914, before the start of World War I. Louise attributes her long life to her faith, staying active, and of course, chocolate cake. That's crazy. When did Alaska become a state? I'm thinking about chocolate cake, not even yeah. that. So. <laughs> Being, I'm taking the geek route and thinking about that. I'm taking the fat cake route. Congratulations so. and happy birthday. Of course, yes, absolutely. Happy birthday. And thank you for joining us tonight at 11. Come back for 12 News in the Morning. For the latest news and weather headlines, head over to our website. Have a great night. We will see you tomorrow.